And so as long as the people that you are leading, they can feel your intentions are pure. They can feel that you're trying to pull the best out of them. And they can clearly see that they are getting better because of your hard coaching. They will respect you. They won't always like you, but they will respect you. Welcome back to the Leaders Only Podcast, where we talk about business, leadership mindset, and just pretty much anything revolved around building an incredible life. You know, one of the reasons that I started this podcast is because I felt like on the way to where we're at now, there wasn't really a place to go to learn tangible skills that are needed in order to succeed and further yourself and just get better overall in every area of your life. And so some background about me, you know, I built a sales company that does over eight figures a year. I own over $10 million worth of real estate, and I built a multiple seven-figure income that's streamlined and in all honesty, doesn't really need me. I plan on teaching you and documenting everything that I learned along the way. And if you get something out of today's message, if you can do me a favor, if you can like, share, and subscribe, it will give us the ability to further our message and help more people, which is what we're all about. Thank you guys so much. Let's dive in. I have to tell you, I am so excited about today. And the reason I'm so excited is because I genuinely feel that if you take what I'm about to give you today and apply it, and or if you avoid the mistakes that I'm about to go over with you today, it will save you 5, 10, 15, 20 years on your leadership journey because leadership is not something that you learn in a day. It's something that you develop through time. It's something that you typically learn through trial and error. But this is what I will tell you, that a smart person learns from their own mistakes, but a wise person learns from other people. So the fact that I'm about to go over common mistakes that I've made throughout the years and common mistakes that I see other people make in their leadership all the time, this could literally save you a decade of making mistakes in your leadership role. So if you're listening to this right now and you wanna scale a team or scale a business, today's message is for you. And I promise you it's not gonna be your generic leadership message about being a do-it-first leader and leading by example. I think if you're listening to this right now, you're already aware of that. You're aware of the fact that you need to lead by example. You're aware of the fact that you need to be a do-it-first leader. But there are probably other things that's affecting your ability to keep a team and you're probably not even aware that you're doing it. And I want to reveal those concepts with you today so you can get better, improve, and really step in to the leadership role that you've been called to be in. And so I really believe today is going to help. I'm so excited for it. So let's dive into some of these leadership mistakes. So the first mistake that I see people make in leadership all the time is they lead with fear versus leading with desire and inspiration. And let me explain what I mean. They use a fear tactic. They try to scare you into taking action versus inspiring you to take action. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be scared into taking action. I want to be inspired to take action. So let me ask you a question. If you would rather be inspired to take action versus scared into taking action, don't you think the people that you're leading operate the same way? Of course they do. But unfortunately, because of what we've witnessed in management roles, in leadership roles, people do not lead properly. They try to scare people into taking action. They say things like, if you don't go do X, Y, and Z, you'll be fired. If you don't show up to this meeting, you won't win. You'll have no chance of succeeding if you don't go do X, Y, and Z. And those are all scare tactics, but none of them inspire you to take action. What we need to do is figure out what people want and then link the action to them getting what they want. So for instance, let me give you an example. Let's say you really wanted to take care of your mom, right? Or you really wanted to take care of your dad. It would be, remember how you told me that you wanted to take care of your mom? Remember how you told me that you wanted to take care of your dad? Well, in order to do that, we got to go do X, Y, and Z. So on the other side of X, Y, and Z is going to be you being in a position where you could take care of your mom. And can we both agree that that would be worth it? Absolutely. Remember how you told me that you wanted to tithe more to the church because that church was struggling, but you know they have a good mission, they got a good heart, and they're doing good for people? Remember when you told me that? Well, the only way for you to be able to tithe to the church more is if you earn more income. And the only way for you to earn more income is if you go do X, Y, and Z. Remember how you told me that you wanted to get promoted? Well, the only way for you to earn that promotion is if you go do X, Y, and Z. So this is what I'll tell you. You go do X, Y, and Z, and that should put you in a position where you can earn that promotion. Can we agree that that's worth it? If all you have to do is X, Y, and Z and you get promoted, can we both agree that that's worth it? Absolutely. Remember how you told me that you wanted to put your kids in better schools and private schools? Well, guess what? If you go do X, Y, and Z, it's going to give you the ability to do that. Remember how you told me that you wanted to have freedom of your schedule and own your schedule and not have to answer to someone and not have someone else have their thumb on you and just live a life where you feel free? Remember how you told me that you wanted that? Well, guess what? If you go do X, Y, and Z, all of a sudden that becomes possible. So you see how I'm leading here? I'm leading with inspiration. I'm leading with desire. I'm leading with what they want versus trying to scare them in doing what it is that I want them to do. So just remember, amateurs lead and or manage by using fear tactics while great leaders, people who are mature in leadership, 
use inspiration and desire as a strategy to influence people to take action. So let's audit our leadership. Let's look back at all the conversations over the last month and ask ourselves, in the last month, how many conversations did I use fear versus using desire as a strategy to get people to move forward? Over the last month on these meetings or these training calls, how many of these training calls did I use fear versus using desire as a strategy to get people to move forward? And really analyze it, really audit the last month of your leadership and then make adjustments, make improvements as needed. Can we do that? Awesome. So the second mistake that I see people make all the time in leadership is that they think their title actually means something. Let me say that again. They think their title actually means something. And so I want you to remember this and I never want you to forget it. The title does not make the leader, the leader makes the title. And so a lot of times people think, oh, because I got a title, you just should respect me. Or because I got a title, you should just follow me. Or because I got a title, you should just do everything that I suggest. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. A true leader knows that the respect of their people needs to be earned day in and day out, every single day. It doesn't matter about what you did a year, two, three, four, five years ago. This isn't management. It's not about what you used to do. It's about what you are doing today. So if you want me to respect you as a leader, I got to see that you're working just as hard as me. I got to see that you're going above and beyond for your people. I got to see that you're putting in the effort necessary to get better each and every single day. And unfortunately, so many people think that because they earned a title, whether it was a month ago or even five years ago, that everyone should just bow down, listen to what they have to say. And that is just not leadership. Am I saying we shouldn't respect these people if they're a respectful person? No, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is I will never look to you for leadership if you are not leading. I will never respect you as a leader in today's time if you are not leading. I might respect the leader you used to be, and I might respect you as a human being, but I'm not going to respect the leader you are today if you are not leading. I'll just respect you as a person. And so I just want you to realize that no title, no milestone, no promotion, no amount of success will ever, will ever, ever, ever mean that you get automatic rights to being respected. A great leader knows that. Great leaders know that their title means nothing. And great leaders know that they need to go earn the respect of their people each and every single day. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that your title means anything because it doesn't. So the third mistake that I see people make in leadership all the time is they lead frustrated, they lead angry, and or they lead based off how they are feeling. And I gotta tell you, if you decide to be a leader, you have to leave your emotions at the door because it's not about how you feel, it's about what your people need. But a huge mistake that I see all the time is that because someone's frustrated, their message has a frustrated tone. Because they're angry, they lead with a slight level of anger in their tone or in the way that they're communicating. Because they're emotionally upset or they have all these things going on, they allow it to affect their energy when they're leading people. And that is a huge mistake and that's the sign of an immature leader. Mature leaders know how to show up regardless of how they feel. You have to learn to bleed and smile at the same time. Because regardless of what's going on in your life, your people expect you to show up at the same level of energy, the same consistency in the way that you operate. They expect you to show up regardless because they're counting on you in order to better their life. And yes, that's a huge responsibility. That's a blunt part of leadership. It's understanding that nobody cares about how you feel because all people care about is how they're feeling. And so as a leader, you gotta show up regardless of what's going on in your life and you have to make sure that regardless of how you're feeling, that does not transfer into your message because I see it all the time. All of a sudden someone's angry, so then all of a sudden they deliver an angry message to their people. All of a sudden someone's frustrated, so all of a sudden they start leading with frustration. But how you are feeling should not affect the interaction that you have with your people because it's your job to uplift them, to inspire them, to encourage them to go operate at a higher level. It's not your people's job to be your punching bag based off how you are feeling. So if I can stress anything, is to make sure that you are not leading with frustration, leading with anger, and leading emotionally. And the last thing that I'll say on this regarding this point is you have to make sure that if you are listening to certain audios or certain books or certain motivational people, that you do not allow their message to influence the message that you communicate to your people. Let me say it again. You cannot allow their message to influence the message that you deliver to your people because your people might need to be encouraged today. But all of a sudden, you listen to some audio by Andy Elliott or Andy Frasilla, which are two stud of studs, by the way. But all of a sudden, you listen to two super intense guys, and now you take that level of intensity, and you allow that to come out in your message. But that's not what your people needed that day. Your people needed to be loved on. Your people needed to be encouraged. Your people needed to be supported. 
and all of a sudden you're challenging them, calling them out because of how fired up you are about some audio that you just listened to. So if I can encourage you to do something, it's make sure that you don't allow the outside things that you are listening to to influence the message that your team needs. Because if you were allowing it, sometimes it might hit, but oftentimes you're gonna deliver the wrong message. So we have to operate with higher levels of strategy, especially if you wanna be in a leadership role. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have not had the opportunity to subscribe just yet, if you can go ahead and do that, that would be incredible. We have about 10,000 plus active listeners and not all of you have subscribed just yet. So if you guys can go ahead and do that, that would be incredible. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the rest of the episode. So the fourth mistake that I see people make in leadership all the time is that they become so busy that they lose connection with their people. They become so busy that their people start to not become seen. They become so busy that their people feel like they're not being heard. And that's a problem. And to be honest with you, that's a mistake that I made in the beginning of the second half of the year. I just became so busy. I had so many things going on that when I was in an appointment, I was thinking about the next appointment. And as I was in that appointment, I was thinking about the five things that I still needed to get done that day. And I almost was overwhelmed with so much that I wasn't as present with people as I needed to be. And that made me feel like my connection wasn't as strong as it needed to be. And so just realize that the busier you get, the more intentional you have to be about being present. The busier that you get, the bigger your business gets, the bigger your team gets, the more intentional you have to become about making sure that your people feel seen, that they feel heard, and that they feel appreciated. Because it becomes very easy not to when you have 300 messages coming in per hour. So just realize that you have to make sure that you go above and beyond to always make sure that your people feel heard, they feel seen, and you have to go above and beyond to build that connection or else you'll lose the respect of your people. The fifth mistake that I see people make is that they are passive aggressive in the way they communicate, both in text messages, the way they communicate one-on-one, -on -one, but more specifically, the way that they communicate to a group and or a crowd of people. And I see this all the time. Because the person in the training role, the leadership role, has an issue with one or two people, they say something that's clearly directed to those one or two people, and it affects the energy of the business, it affects the energy of the team. Because let's be real, when you get up in front of a crowd and you communicate, and you are targeting one or two people in the room with a comment, everyone knows who you're talking about. So all it does is A, it embarrasses those people, B, it makes them not like you, and C, it makes them resent you, but then it also makes everyone else in the crowd afraid to ever be on your bad side because they feel like you're gonna embarrass them the same way that you just embarrass those one or two other people. So it's very important that if you ever have an issue with somebody, don't passive aggressively attack it in front of a group of people, go have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, fix the issue, and nobody else needs to know about it. That is the most respectable way to do it. Just man up, woman up, have that conversation, but do not address it in front of people and publicly in a passive aggressive way. Even if you don't mention their name, do not do it. There is never a time, there is never a place for passive aggressive comments to show up in leadership. It is never okay. The sixth mistake that I see people make all the time is that they treat everyone equal. And I know what you might be thinking, Matt, if I'm in a leadership role, shouldn't I treat everyone equal? And the answer to that question is no. You treat everyone fairly, but not everyone equally. You treat everyone with respect, but not everyone equally. And let me explain why. Let's say I'm leading 10 people. And let's say eight of those people are not working that hard. They're not doing their absolute best and they're not going above and beyond for their teammates. And then let's say I have two people that are working super hard. They go above and beyond and they're always doing everything in their power to possibly win. Who do you think I should spend my time with? Do you think I should spend the majority of my time with the 80% that aren't giving their best? Or can we all agree that I should spend my time with the 20% that are doing everything in their power to succeed. And so I live by what I call the 80-20 rule, where I spend 80% of my time with 20% of people, and that 20% of the ones that are moving the needle, going above and beyond, doing their absolute best, those 20% of people are looking to change their life. And then I take 20% of my time, and I divvy it up amongst the 80% of people. Because those are the ones that aren't quite giving their best, they're not going above and beyond, and they're not really giving full effort. Here's the deal though. It's very, very important that as a leader, that I treat all those that are in that 80 percentile with tons of respect because those that are in that 80 percentile will have the opportunity to go earn their way into the 20 percentile. And I want to make sure that I give them that opportunity. And I also want to make sure that I equip them with that opportunity, but I'm not going to sit around and try to beg them to go do it. I'm looking for people who want to move. I'm looking for people who want to change their life. And I'm looking for people who want to make a forever lasting impact in this world. That's who I'm looking for. And that's who my time goes to. So just realize, 
It is not your job as a leader to be a politician leader and divvy up all of your time equally. Treat people with respect, be fair, but do not treat people equally. And last but not least, the seventh mistake that I see people make all the time in leadership is that they lead with the intention to be liked versus leading with the intention to be respected. You know, if I tell you what you want to hear, you'll like me. But if I tell you what you need to hear and I do it in a tactful way, you'll respect me. And so if you want to call yourself a leader, you have to become okay with people not liking you all the time. You have to become okay with people hating you at moments. But you also have to be okay with telling people the hard truth because that is the only way to help people become the best version of themselves. If you look back over your life, who are the people that you hated and loved at the same time? It was always your coaches because your coaches pushed you when you didn't want to be pushed. They pushed you to run a harder sprint. They pushed you to go harder in the gym. They yelled at you in certain moments but you always loved them and you always respected them because you knew their intentions were pure and because you knew that they were pulling the best out of you and you can feel that you were getting better. And so as long as the people that you were leading, they can feel your intentions are pure. They can feel that you're trying to pull the best out of them and they can clearly see that they are getting better because of your hard coaching, they will respect you. They won't always like you, but they will respect you. And that's what matters the most in leadership. And so we have to become okay with not being liked in certain moments. Because by not being liked in certain moments, people become the best version of themselves. And that's truly what leadership is all about. And so guys, if you got something out of today's message, if you can do me a favor, if you can like, share, subscribe, that would mean the absolute world to us. Obviously, as you guys know, we put out all this information for free because we're just trying to help people achieve and succeed in business faster. That's really what it's all about. How many people can we impact? And all that we ask is that if you got at least one thing out of today, that you just share the episode, you share the content, because it will help us grow even larger and make an even bigger impact in this world, which is what we're all about. God bless. Talk to you guys soon. Have a good one.